right, everybody, it's the Jerry Metcalf Podcast, where top agents tell how they do it. And today, we have back on the show, I call him Jay-Z, but John Zimmerman, top agent in Fort Worth, Texas, with Compass. And Jay-Z, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Jerry. I appreciate it. Awesome to be on. So everybody, I've got Jay-Z on because he has one of the most impressive teams. He's doing, I think... I can't keep up with you, 140 million, 150, 190 million, over 100 million a year, I'm well into the 150s. And he's got this team that he has built that is truly a cohesive team of people playing, every single person on his team has a vested interest and role in delivering the experience and just as important or more important, the results to his clients. and. I think it might be the most impressive setup I've seen, and I wanted to bring you back on to share it. So thank you. You bet. Glad to be here. Absolutely. I want to start that with asking you, what is a team to you? Okay. So a team, uh, you know, by, by for me, is a very cohesive unit where we all have a goal in, in common, and then everybody, I uh, have role players on this, uh, and I try to find... Uh, very, very bright people, uh, and not necessarily that are you know long-term uh, real estate agents. Uh, I look for uh, very bright, great attitude, and coachable. And so when when I find somebody, and I, and it and it has to be a good fit for our culture because we're you know, it's full contact karate. We're we're working every day, all day, uh, and we're we're. Uh, we're structured in a way where it's not for the faint hearted. Everybody does really well and we're able to, to provide a unmatched experience for our client, which is, that's what it's all about. When, when it stops being about that, you're out of business. And well, you so just said we're able to provide an unmatched experience for our client. There's all this stuff you're doing, but I, I love that your focus isn't even on what you're doing, even though I want to know more about that. But the focus is like, what's the result? How are we going to achieve the best result? Do that with a team. Sure. Oh, that, that and that's a fact, and that's that's what what people need to understand about a team is it's it, because uh, in general your client has very little concern with you know how how it works for the agent. They just want to know basically how is it going to affect me? How am I going to sell my house quicker for more uh, with less inconvenience to me? You know how exactly. can this, how can I feel good about this whole project? So when you have a team and they're all like minded. Uh, well coached. I think coaching is is also uh, important because uh, I, I can't tell you that I'm the greatest manager of people in the world, but I do know how to sell real estate, and so mm-hmm. I'm able to work with my team on that portion of it. And then everybody has designated roles, and so things that need to be addressed. Here's a misnomer. Sometimes, so sometimes people think that they're going to get their agent one on one. They're going to have their high test agent, and they're going to focus more on them because they they have your listings and they have, you know, you're not going to get anybody that's just under, that's on their team that's not, that won't understand the deal. Mm-hmm. If you do it correctly, you know more about that. You can give them way more attention and you can focus on the business of selling that house. And so if I'm out going to meet the photographer and I'm out, you know, running small kind of minutia errands on the project when I'm trying to sell it, I can't do the big macro things and talk to the agents and, and the selling portion of it uh, that that, it, that I, would, I wouldn't be able to do it if I didn't have the support. Well, and you don't get the experience and experience. It's kind of like the compound effect, right? The compound effect of what you're doing Absolutely. to get the property sold. The more you're doing that, the better you get at it and the more properties you're selling as opposed you know, to... Well, I'm able to operate on several planes marketing. So I'm able to, all right, so I've got somebody working on the digital portion of it. Somebody's working on our print portion of it. Mm-hmm. Somebody's working on what, what we're doing special with open houses. And so in able to segment it out like that, the, the conglomerate effect is is huge. You know, so I, it's, it's, uh, I'm able to give it substantially more time and effort. Exactly. Exactly. So tell us a little bit about your team and how you're set up. So... And what is important when you're looking at, you know, you say, as far as the people, each person needs to be smart, bright, positive, good attitude. So 
Number one, three things. Number one, bright person. Number two, good attitude. Number three, someone who is coachable. Someone who is listen. And in all three of those, it needs to be somebody who also fits the culture. But what are who what are the different moving parts of your team? You've got listing coordinator, closing manager. I make actually I kind of know, but because I've been like I'm building a team based on what you've done because I'm so sure. impressed with it. But you tell us a little bit about how you've structured it and how you discovered those pieces and parts and how they come together. Sure. So uh, number one. Uh, I get a gut feeling for people, and so I, I, you know, I look at the resume and I look at what they what they've done, and and uh, and then I I I vet them, you know, through uh, uh, generally it's people I know that have referred the people in when I when we talk, and so they've been with me for a long time. You know, my my team is is uh, uh, pretty long standing. We understand each other and we know how everything works, and so what I look for is somebody that is, you know, very positive, you know, and right. and. and and figures out ways to get it done, not not why it can't happen. Why oh, can't happen. I love, let's just write that down. Why so it not why it can't, so but why it can't. There's no time to dwell on anything negative. So right, let's right. just say that, that something difficult. There's a challenge in there. All right. So that, that's the nature of the beast. If it was easy, everybody would would perform at this level. So let's figure out how to get there. What are we going to do? What, how are we going to find a way for that client to sell? And it. it I don't know. Just, just uh, there's unique challenges to every listing. So you mm-hmm. just, you, so the ability to solve problems huge. Uh, you know, uh, you have to be in my group. If you're, if you don't follow up, you don't have a job. Mm. That's the deal. I mean, you got to follow up. You have to call people back. You got to text them. You got to do like you know. I have those. The deal call, text, them. email. Regardless. This so, is it. You're, and, and, that's our team mantra too. Like I just yeah. gonna be Jay Z when I grow up. So well, tell us who are the, what are the different parts of your team? Who what are so the roles I, and how many members? I have uh, myself and then three other agents, uh, and we work on uh, all the projects. We you know I spend time uh, with everybody every day, and so we go uh, and then specific segments of time on offsetting days, so we can set goals and then we can meet a day later. Or two days later, so they have time to work through it and, and see where we are on that. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, generally, we'll drive different neighborhoods that we're active in. Uh, we'll make detailed notes on that, and then we'll follow up on the execution. And mm-hmm. so I've got myself and three other agents. I've got a team lead that's been with me five and a half years. Uh, I have a full-time marketing and film person that is in charge of creating uh, specialized stuff daily. So I, I, pr- I produce a video production daily, whether wow. it be about a segment about a unique portion of a house or uh, because sometimes that's more effective than trying to storm through the front door, you know, look at this, three bedrooms, two baths, you know, like that. Right. It's, it's, it's a unique detail or feature in that property. Uh, and so, I've, you know, I've, sometimes I'll feature actors in it, sometimes I won't, you know, but, uh, but so I've got him doing that. So I'm real nimble in terms of turning out really high level uh, video pieces and photography on uh, on my listings, and that's super important. That's people people uh, people gravitate to that, and it it, it translates into buyers. So, mm-hmm. uh, and then I've got I've got an admin that takes care of inputting, and then I've got a couple of interns that work through some just different processes. But uh, in general, uh, you know, we we we. We meet reasonably often, you know, we, you mm-hmm. know, as a group, you know, a couple times a week in a full meeting and we go and we look at every single list and we run down the list. What have we done on this? What, what needs to be done? What's the feedback? You know, uh, how do, how does, how do they like to be communicated with? Is this a texter or is this a caller? I mean, do, uh, is it email guy, whatever, uh, but make sure that we're in good contact with all of those people. So they're not thinking that you've signed them up and, and Forgotten about us. That's the end of the deal. You know, wait that's, what we're, that's what real estate agents are famous for. Oh, correct. You know, and that's that's. Uh, but to be good at it, you have to seek the buyers. So let's talk about another part of the team that I think a lot of people forget. So you've got the people on your team, but also a big component, a big part of our success as real estate agents is your broker. Absolutely. Um, and give us a little bit about because we are with the same broker. Give us a little bit about. Um, 
we're with Compass, obviously. And what about Compass plays into your team and what is the role that they play to grow this business? Okay, so Compass is the most forward-thinking, progressive, bright uh, brokerage probably in history. You know, and what they're doing is providing, and I have a young team, you know, these, they've mm -hmm. been with me for several years, but I, I hire them. And so they really embrace the technological aspects. And so when you've got an agency that really has, so Compass from, if you look from the top down, you look at all the people that run that company and the way that they run it, you know, they have got the. Let's the start most, with the two founders, Robert well, Rifkin and Roy Alon. Yeah, I mean, they're brilliant. You know, these are, and they're, and they're embracing things in the real estate market that have never been embraced before. And so here you've got a, an industry that is somewhat antiquated, you know, and, and, and being and, dominated by the, or we were kind of attacked as an aggressive word, but the technology businesses are coming after us and trying to reinvent our industry. But the more sure. they do that, the stronger agents like you become in our world. And then you've got Ori Lum, who started a company and sold it to Google and started another company and sold it to Twitter. And then you've got the CEO, Ori's the chair, you've got the CEO, Robert Rufkin, who is like, man, this guy's onto something. Technology, if there's a billion dollar company, it's a technology company. I mean, for the most part in the business today. And it's if, it's, if it isn't, it's got technology behind it. Our business has technology. Our consumers don't use technology provided by us. They're using technology provided by companies who are in many senses competitors or taking the control of the real estate industry away from the agent and putting the hands of agents without experience. We real estate agents, we don't have a company or a business truly providing technology until Compass has come into the picture. These guys are the real deal and brilliant and build, build, build. Compass is all about building, moving forward, thinking forward. So now we've got you and I both, we've got Compass on our team as a part of our team. So tell us, it's I'll let you keep, but I had to like, I had to do my feel, I couldn't resist. But tell us a little bit about how that plays a part for your clients and the results and what you, your team can do with that. Sure, so uh, you know what, as an agent, you wanna spend as much time selling as possible, right? Just as much time working on that. And so all of the Compass technology whether it be the way you're targeting buyers, the way that you're uh, you're communicating with your sellers or, or your buyers, uh, the whole process is smarter, more integrated. Uh, you know, from you know, it's funny people ask me. I say, "How? Well, tell me what the good one." And I say, "Everything's better." You know, it's because you're talking about using exactly. Yeah, it's it's the and, and the, the people the genuine mission of the company is altruistic. They are, they want good things for people. They're just really legitimately exactly. trying to make it a better real estate market. Well, the humanity. So, I mean, an example that I bet your marketing team uses, and this is where I love it because you've got your team coming in and using the tools, and you're out selling. So, one of the things that our team does is on social media we have. And we have, so, you know, everybody can go boost and target market on social media, right? Anybody can do that. Compass has a tool where we can target market through Compass, but we do it in a way where they'll run. Um, Compass has a, I don't know if it's an algorithm, but it can test run target markets and see which one works better. Yep. The property and you select the ideal buyer and then they see which one gets the most traction and the it closest to the ideal buyer for that property. And they tweak that. They do that in a matter of seconds that might take someone weeks. And by then the property needs to be sold and you may, right. we found the buyer that much faster. And then we've got yeah, our networking absolutely. tool. Every, but everything. Yeah. So whereas some of these things, there are outside sources that try to do these things, uh, having it all in one spot and having them work together in a, in a, in a way that is, you know, smarter, stronger, faster, the whole deal. And, and so that's where it all, the synergy of all that is, is untouchable. Well, it's like, it's for my team. That's what yeah, it's like. you've got, so it's the cohesive team, which I want to go back to, but elaborating on Compass, you've got a cohesive broker that has the technology's key. Technology is, is the industry in the day of technology. So it's the broker that's providing the cohesive technology to market the listings on a whole new level and a whole new way to target the buyer and get that right buyer. Because it's not just about, we can all get it out there to everybody, but we've got to get it out there in the right light to the right buyer. 
and then the team behind it doing the leg work to make that happen so you can go out there and sell 150 million a year. Well, yeah, and that's 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 like I said, that's kind of the, the silent team member in this deal is, is the brokerage, and it's it, it makes a massive difference. But uh, you know, on on the the uh, on the team front, just just allowing, like I said, it's all the customer experience, uh, mastering all the technology, mm-hmm. uh, and it's not cutting the communication experience out with your client. It's putting it in. So you're, you know, so like if you do like collections with your buyers and they're, and you're, and you're like, well, John Smith just, he like kind of likes that house. It pops up on my phone in real time and I can look at it and go, oh yeah, there it's like, one of my coming soon that I can see that. It's amazing the level of communication. It's almost like y'all are on walkie talkies with each other. You well, know? and you I'm can't so- lose the property. We have, spe- we used to have special names for our properties. The white house, the purple house, the like yellow dog house like what we had all kinds of names for houses that we would make up to keep up with them and try to track everything on five different lists that we couldn't integrate and talk on and now you've got a platform you can communicate on and everybody knows what house is where and what we said about it and we can go right back to it so right if somebody pops into one of those and it's a really urgent deal and it's on my deal well my team members will also see that somebody that's another portion that's so great about having a team is i can be in the middle of a showing and something can pop on that and the calls will come through my different deals. That's another thing that I do that's, that helps. You, you, I separate, somebody live answers my calls. When, when mm-hmm. we're calling off a different sign or an advertisement or whatever, we're, someone from my team is going to get it. It's going to split off to somebody in that deal, and it's, it's highly unlikely you're going to get a machine. And so in, in, you know, this is an instant gratification kind of world where everybody likes to get an answer right then. They're able to get it. And so if I get a real person on the phone. Yeah. That You've got a one problem. man show with no team. They're going to call. They're going to get voicemail. They're not getting a human being. They're good. If it's a good, if it's a good one man person, they're going to get voicemail because that guy's busy. Well, you know? exactly. And, and can't do the other things that they're doing. So it's a catch 22 for that guy. You can't compete with what a group, the synergistic effect of a group that is working together, well coached, knowledgeable, smart people that are, that have a common guard. So instead of hiring one agent, you're hiring, team you know five or six or seven well, are looking at it and at risk of being a little bit or sound a little bit cliche here but i'm going to go there anyway because if you've been real estate you've heard this analogy but you do think about why would you go to a doctor who doesn't have a receptionist wouldn't that be a little bit worrisome just to tell you just a tad bit someone who yeah. doesn't answer the phone and for if him you're going to go let's say you're going to go and have knee surgery you want the guy that's doing three or four hundred a year or you want the guy that just does his friends does like four or five a year right a year. i just need my friend's knees <laughs> Yeah, you want you want somebody on like that really. You want knows, somebody who's done a lot of knees and is really good at those, and is going to get it right, right? Sorry. And somebody who's not going to get distracted out of knee surgery because somebody's calling at the front desk that might be that other deal he needs to get because he can't get enough because he doesn't have a team supporting him. Right, and you wouldn't so. want your mom's friend to do your your knee surgery. Exactly. You, know, you put somebody that is a killer that is out there working super hard and understands it. Front understands tonight. negotiating, understands marketing, understands the market, and only understands all of that, but has specialists in each component of what's important. So what do you find is most important on your, what are the roles? Obviously, you've got administrative and salespeople. How do mm-hmm. you divvy up your administrative roles, and do you divvy up admin, uh, the salesperson roles, or does everybody kind of do the same thing, and how do you make sure you allocate what deals to who, and give us a picture of how all of that works. How okay, the, so the, the work doesn't end up falling, but a lot of people start a team, and the agent's still like, but I feel like I'm still kind of doing everything. How do you make sure everybody knows their role and take care of it on it without sure. a conflict so of interest? What what I find effective is to take the, the, the listing pool and buyer's pool and I separate those out. And I say, all right, we're going to work together on these all. And so I'm CC'd and I'm involved in all the communications back and forth. On every but deal. They're spearheading. And so, uh, but they're but we're working together. I say spearheading. They're 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 keeping me abreast of everything that's going on in the listing in real time. So I'm seeing it when they're seeing it. So I never step out of the transaction. However, uh, they're able to dig down, dig deeper. We can get we really comprehensive and we work together on those. And so I, I, I count on them to make sure that we're looking at, let's say there's a showing on one of their listings. We're gonna make really sure that we get some feedback. Good, bad, ugly. Whatever. Get I want it. honest feedback. 
Yeah. And I want to share that with the seller. And that's that's important. You know, that's that's real time market. That's what's happening. You know, sometimes it's not pleasant. Sometimes it's really pleasant. You know, but but you got to you got to tell them what it is. And so and a lot of agents don't leave feedback or they're coy about it. Or even if they, they kind of leave something, there's maybe something in between the lines. I want to talk to them. So I want to know what happened. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll have my guys. We'll pursue that until I can get on the phone with them and I can hear it. Too. You mean the so agent or the buyer? The virus the agent, right. you know, on one of my listings, correct. Yeah. You know, so uh, really just being thorough. And so, but when you separate out, you can be uber thorough on everything. And that's, and that's what's important to the client. So I want to run everybody through this. So you have, you have this set of listings and on every listing, do you assign kind of a lead agent to every listing, but you're following up and making sure the feedback and everything's happening on each listing? Absolutely. So I signed out. Sorry. I want you to gather, help me make sure we have all of the information on you know, and then let's let's walk through it together, and then let's figure out what calls need to be made, and or what follow up needs to be made, and what action items occur from that that feedback. So with three, because it's the agents doing that, Correct. right? So with three agents on the team, you kind of give a handful of listings to each agent to oversee Correct. and get feedback yep. on, and then administration's more a part of like getting the listing inputted, getting amendments signed for contracts, really kind of not on the sales end at all, just more on the truly. Right. Everybody knows how to do down. all of it. Uh, so, you know, if there's a pinch, you know, at any time they can do that and everybody's nimble. However, you know, what I like to do is I like to keep the back the back room part of this deal, you know, the mm -hmm. back office stuff. Uh, I want it done perfectly. And I want them to be working That's on that. Bad. And so that my guys that are my agents have the opportunity to go out and work back on the client. So yeah. buyers, tell us a little bit about your buyers. How do you handle those? Obviously, you use collections, which is awesome because you have an interface. Yeah. So nobody's losing track of the listings and where they're going and also having access to things through our technology with Compass before they ever even come on the market. Um, but in addition to that, how do you integrate the team for that? Do you deal with buyers? Do they deal with buyers? Do you cross over? Do you we, we all do. Uh, and, and so uh, what we like to do is... is uh, Standard operating procedure would be to, to go, and there's several different groups within the real estate community for coming soon. So, so we we spend a lot of time with uh, on behalf of our clients that are looking for something that's special that hasn't been out there. So we're we're pursuing that, looking for off market stuff. We're watching uh, watching MLS, you know, consistently, obviously several times a day, watching, see what's popping up, notifying clients. Uh, it's really just being super market aware and you know when you, mm -hmm. we do a great volume and so in general people uh the other agents will send their stuff to us so that we have uh we have that availability even if it's not all listing. exactly and keeping a database of it in addition to the database that you keep behind the scenes um the, of your stuff coming and compasses stuff coming so uh, but on that do you guys because i'm trying like i know a lot about it but i want you to tell us about it actually i know more about the listing end but so each agent, do agents have their own clients? Or are they all your clients and the agents are just helping? Or is there a little bit of both? And how a little bit of both. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, you know, depending upon what schedules are like, what I like to say is, you know, we live in a busy society, right? And, and our mm -hmm. clients, their time is is very valuable. And so part of the, you know, just not to keep going back to that team thing, but let's say, you know, hey, my wife really wants to Well, that's what this interview is about. But yeah, go ahead. So, <laughs> like, so like, my wife really wants to get in and see, you know, 321 Taylor Street. Okay. Right. What do you want to see? You know, and so then I'll go, you, I mean, as long as the buyer, we can get, if it's unoccupied, I'll say you set the time. Someone will be there. Hopefully it can be me. If not, somebody that's very educated can be there, whatever. And we can get your wife in, whatever it is. But we've got the flexibility to do that, you know, and, and, uh, <clears throat> So it fits in their schedules. I make really, I'm really cognizant of what my client's schedule is because you, I, I deal with a lot of. People it's not one well, of my favorite is when people call and their agents respond with, "Well, I'm out of town, so I could show it to you on Monday at three or Thursday you at." Something else eight. by then. Exactly. Really, yeah, I mean, that's my thought. That's that not it. It's that's never even. I want them to think like it's full all the time, full availability. Our job is to create an environment where they can want to see a house and we're going to get a minute and we're not sure. going to be the deterrent. 
Absolutely. So, wait, you're set up. You can do that. Calls, that's part of that being there. That's what that team deal is, so that you can be there and you can provide that service that nobody else can provide in that way. You know, and so, uh, and, and also you got to remember, you're there to serve. I mean, that's where we're, and this is this is. Love that. You know, I'm, I'm helping you. I, I'm working. I'm for here to time. serve you. I'm not entitled to this job. It's kind of like people say, "Well, realtors are realtors, and we have to be realtors because." We're realtors. Well, no, we don't. Not if we don't offer a service. Not if we don't bring value to the industry. No, we really don't need to be realtors, which is what I love about what technology, not to sidetrack to technology again, but that's what technology's done for our industry is everybody had this assumption that with the internet, you weren't going to need realtors anymore. All the internet did was, is, was filter out the agents who aren't serious quickly, and even the ones coming in who aren't serious quickly, and really... Real estate agents that are serious are able to use technology to enhance the client experience, and it enhances the necessity for real estate agents when you need them, because now they need somebody to also interpret the data. Well, and the complexity of a transaction that takes place, you know, that's not a cookie cutter, that's not, you know, that's not, you know, uh, a transaction of a say a million dollar house in Fort Worth, Texas, which is an expensive house, mm -hmm. uh, it's way too complex to have somebody just click on it and buy it. You need somebody that understands. <laughs> They're not buying shoes. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to know everything about the area. You need to know. Uh, you need to have a great inspector. You need to know how you you go about changing things, the change fixing things, things like that. And the, and the chances of that being factored out are very very slim. I can't imagine how that would. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any artificial intelligence ever that would ever get to the point that would make us that where it wasn't necessary. Well, that wasn't necessary in the connections and resources and the ability to negotiate and what to do and how to do it. I mean, the list goes on. And on the listing side as well, I'll tap on one more thing real quick before we close out, is your listing presentation and your listing process is also very integrated with your team so that you guys get the property on the market appropriately and quickly and the client has full engagement from your team at all times. Give us a little example of kind of walk us, you know, how does a lit from the listing presentation to the getting it in the system and the client's experience with you day to day or week to week working with you? How does that look? Okay, so uh, another part where the team team portion is is helpful. Um, so I go in there, we take a meeting. Uh, I'll take me and we'll get the listing and then we'll go through that deal and I'll bring the entire team. We'll go in different, different deals and everybody has a notepad and then we'll converge and we'll discuss the property and everybody will give their points on specific angles that they think would be appealing to a buyer. And so I'm figuring out 30 different reasons they would buy the house, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so we go through that, we make our list and then we get our media plan. So then I'll get my, I'll schedule photography. I'll get my videographer in there. We'll work on a script or some kind of video that touches on some of the things that we feel like are going to be big sale points. Uh, and then uh, we'll put that together. Now, do you uh, have scripts for all of your videos? We work through it. We work through how we're going to do even if it's just kind of uh, storyboarding it to what to the story we want to tell. Even if we're not talking in it, if we just want to storyboard the features that need to be highlighted, yeah, we, we work through all of it. Love that. That's awesome. So, and then, you know, and then we've got, I've got a listing coordinator uh, that's going through this thing. We've got, we're inputting it. We're making sure we're checking our data out. Two people check the data and make sure it gets input correctly. Uh, and then we can get to market very quickly, uh, you know, and, and, and very thoroughly. You know, so we come, we're not coming in, you know, halfway there. We're coming in there with a very sophisticated marketing plan and really good marketing assets for that particular property. And so when they look at it, they're like, wow, this looks great. You've got everything, it's, and it makes sense. And they're not asking for things that aren't on there. And if they, they're just, it helps get them, uh, get their mindset in a, in a buying mindset. And I think your listing presentation, you bring your team in, you bring your whole team in the listing presentation? I well, didn't no, bring a lot of members. listing, it's not the whole team. I generally bring one assistant with me. And, I, and, I, uh, and the reason for that being is I want to know. Everybody needs to be working on like I selling the other houses. You're saying. So like if, if you and I are in a conversation, I'm gonna remember a whole lot of it. But if I have somebody taking notes of things and the action items we discussed during that meeting, uh, and so I've got another set of eyes and ears on it, then when we put our 
our plan together. We go, oh, yeah, remember we said this, we're doing this, here's where this, this would be our strategy for that. And it Love makes it, it, um, it makes you better. So when you go on your listing presentation, you've got, some, which I've started doing, by the way. Love it. It's awesome. And that, because I will miss, I'm so engaged in the person and their needs and how they're feeling that I can miss details that I hate to have to go back and ask for again. So we get all of that. And, and we kind of get, we've got two different personalities. But my point in that is, a big question for me would be, and I think everybody would be this marketing plan. You know, it's clearly a very, you know, some people have like, this is my marketing plan. It's the same for every property. Yours is clearly customized. Is that marketing plan become, is that something that goes into place? Obviously, do you write and implement that marketing plan after you're hired or do you present them a marketing plan before they hire you or does it depend on the client? Uh, generally, so my first time in to see the house, then I might be way out base with the marketing plan. If I right, right. And so I, I don't do that. In general, I'll give them a, uh, a, a, a kind of a grouping of what we do in general. You know? Exactly. Uh, yeah. And then I'll and then I'll tailor it to the specific property. Exactly. So it, may, it needs a lot of uh, a lot of you know print advertising. It may not be. It may be something that's better served with with you know another form of, of advertising. It might be something that'd be a great thing to have an open house at. It might be something that. It would be a horrible thing to have an open house. Depending on where it is, depending on if it's, you know, is it a golf or a tennis player that's going to like it? Is it, a, is it on the water? Is it not on the water? Is it, I mean, I'm thinking about my own listings. <laughs> yeah. doing. But exactly. That's, I mean, that's awesome. I think that gives us a really great picture of what you're doing and talking about Compass, the company with a love, you know, with launching Compass in new markets in Atlanta. It's a love when people think it's my company. Because I'm like, I know, like, SoftBank just gave me 1.2 billion. Yeah. And we're valued right. at 4.4. And now we're like, are we in 20 cities in the country? Anyway, it's a really exciting thing. Well, to be the, culture, the culture uh, at Compass makes you, it, it makes you want it. And it's, yeah, I, you're, I'm proud of it. I, think it's I have cool. never felt such ownership of something and such a part of something, yet it's so huge. It is such a huge, such a force to be reckoned with. Um, and people, yeah, yeah. Anybody, anybody that looks at that deal, uh, in my opinion, that's educated and understands what they're doing and how they're doing it, yeah, it's 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 a very easy decision. Well, and it's really fun because then you you come in and, and people you people you kind of get stopped in your tracks um, by everybody wanting to learn a little bit more about everything that we're bringing to the market. And it's really, I love that we're elevating with what we're doing with Compass. Where it's about everybody. We're bringing everybody together and elevating our business to new levels and our industry to new levels. As opposed to people used to like oh fall into real estate and now they want to be in real estate. Now what's that? So I'm sorry. No, you said something and I interrupted you. Oh, so with some of those new initiatives I've actually started using uh, in that deal. So like where we've got, uh, you know, every sale you have, there's not going to be, you know, sunshine and lollipops. They're not going to, you know, sometimes you're going to have like a, uh, a home where there's uh, they really need to sell it, or they're having financial difficulty, or there's a divorce or something. And they and so some of the programs that Compass concierge. offers, where they'll, the concierge will they'll stage it, or they'll they'll loan the money to remodel the kitchen yeah. or whatever, so that you can right. get it sold. Are exactly, but brilliant, you know, and it, it provides the, your 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 client. An opportunity to realize a substantially larger gain or, or net from the deal in a shorter period of time, and it, it's it's nobody really has thought to do that kind of stuff, and it's 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 well, it's a, it's a pretty strong partner to have. It's a pretty strong oh. partner to bring to the table for our business as well as for our clients. Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to ask you some final three. Okay. That I almost forgot. Number one. In your team building, do you find that there's one nice powerful tool, whether it's technology or people, that you use to bring it all together and make it work? Okay, so on the people front, uh, it's less tech technology and more, uh, you know, the way I've got my deal structured, everybody advances as we advance. So the better that I do or the better that they do, we all do better together. So getting everybody rowing in the same direction, huge and cohesiveness right and so that structure uh it, it breeds a team environment and so that's that's super important so everybody cares about every listing and every closing 
because everybody's involved in every listing and every closing. So everybody's involved in every listing and closing, and everybody in some capacity is incentivized for every closing. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. Um, and I think that would be your tool, is making sure that you're structured in a way that everybody's incentivized on every deal and engaged in every deal. Does that sum up, sum it up pretty well? Absolutely. If there is a book, and if you don't have one on team building, then give us something just to impact our life and our business. What would that be? Uh, you know, I've been reading that never split the difference that you that, that's pretty good. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Hey, Isaac, that's our one liner. You know, I've been reading that never split the difference. I love that. You know, were you were you in um, LA when I met him? I can't remember if you were. Yeah, I was. We were all. Yeah, our group I was, was all embarrassed because I was literally like Chris Boss. Like I couldn't even speak English anymore. I was so excited. I was like the preteen meet Justin Bieber. So would that be the book? Or what's well, your... uh, you know, I, I say that, you know, there's, the, but that's the one I'm currently. Well, while we're on it, because you know me, I love that book, and then I'm, we'll get another one. But what is your big takeaway from that book? Never split the difference. There's a million of them. I mean, there's, yeah. it's, it's, it's uh, you know, I mean, it's funny because there's some great, uh, some great parts, not only for your business, but for, you know, uh, relationships in general. And mm -hmm. so it's brilliant. I mean, just the way that the uh, the emotional intelligence portion of it, uh, I think, is is Huge. spot on, mm -hmm. and and it allows you know it allows you to share things with your client and present it in a way that's very simplistic to them. That is kind of uh, clarifies things. So I think that's one of the, the big things for me is I'm able to uh, dissect issues and present them to them in a very cohesive clear way where they understand where they don't this. they don't feel they don't get defensive when you say it and you yeah. don't get defensive i always say never be defensive or desperate i'm not sure where i got that from but i mm -hmm. that book really keeps you in a place where even if somebody gets defensive or desperate it's a language and a way of asking questions that you can quickly diffuse it and bring people back to the same page. Because yep, ultimately, agree. in this business, we all want the same thing. Just gotta yeah, get on. Absolutely. Gotta just get in that place where we don't forget it. What? So, what is the other book? Uh, that that's kind of the one. I'm, that's that's one I'm in there. I, I've got a series of other none are coming to mind at this moment. But, good uh, because that's the one. That's, that's the one. one. Real hard. There's a lot of good stuff. And working with teams and people and your kids and your spouse and whatever. Um, I, and Asia told me his business increased by 40% as a result of reading that book. And finally, he was the 10th person who recommended it to me. And I was like, okay. And then two more, I think, recommended it. And I finally picked it up and I read it. I think I'm going on five times now. Um, but last thing, if there's one thing that you hope I and everyone listening to this interview gets out of this, what would that be? Okay. Uh... One thing. Uh, I like that. Okay. So much more, but I will say this. I said there, there's probably no real estate business uh, that's successful without consistent follow-up, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, attention to detail. And then and, and remembering that without your clients, you don't have a business, mm -hmm. you know. And so figuring out how to provide the service in a way that's, that is what they like and, and provides them uh the best opportunity to be successful that's the takeaway so if you can if you make sure if you remember it's about the client and figure out how to best do things for them you'll be successful that's a great place to finish thank you